Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about Rogan. And I have good news for you. It's what I suspected. That Rogan would beat the cancel culture. And he beat it handily. Now, what does this mean? Well, it starts to mean, it starts to mean that your opponent is human. So, all of these people, they're trying to get people fired from their job. They took their best shot, the woke and the legacy media. It was really, if you wonder where the attack on Rogan came from, and I'm just going to tell you this right now, I guarantee you they're going to let this die down. And in a couple of months, I suspect they're going to go after him on the transgender uh, issue. Which, at that point, most people will be like, yeah, I mean, you already tried this. I, none of us care. So, if you don't know, Rogan was caught up in a controversy for saying a certain word that white people aren't allowed to say. And he didn't call anybody that. He just used the term, and I explain this all the time, he talked about Red Fox using it in the 1970s on network TV and how you could never really get away with that today. Well, Rogan, after this entire controversy, he just went offline, did his thing. He's made the roadmap for the rest of us. Unfortunately, most of us aren't in a situation where we can afford to, you know, even in the worst case scenario, just live a life of luxury. Even if they did get him canceled, there was nothing that I, I don't, my thing is this, I get where it's coming from. It's coming from Pfizer executives, pharmaceutical companies, legacy media, because he's an existential threat to legacy media. And he's also a threat to the bottom line if he has having Dr. Uh, Malone on and that gets 60 million views. The executives at pharmaceutical companies that want to sell more vaccines don't want you saying the negatives about things. Also, Rogan, just he's a guy having conversations, man. Like two guys would talk, hanging out, you know, just getting to know each other. <clears throat> they don't want that. The legacy media, the people like Brian Stelter or Don Lemon. I call him Don Lemon. Like, get stop trying to church up your name, calling yourself Don Lemon. Like, your name's Lemon, all right? That's what I'm going to call you. But, you know, Brian Stelter, I'm just going to call you Donut Factory. So, you know, they took their shots. They hit, they missed. And Rogan is back to being Rogan, which is expected. But Rogan brought up an actual legitimate point. And again, we're into one of those things that I don't understand why other people don't understand this. And I think it's because a lot of these people in legacy media, especially on the left in Siena, the thing I've noticed is a lot of them are just disconnected elites from reality. And this is just the, what it is, man. I doubt very much that Brian Stelter has any relatives that work blue collar jobs, that go hunting during hunting season, that could change a tire, that could say no to a Krispy Kreme donut. You know, I don't think that he knows a lot of these people. And I don't think that he understands these types of people. If there's one thing they can do, and it drives him insane. Why aren't they listening to us and why are they listening to Fox News? Fox News is entertainment news. But people know that. CNN masquerades as actual news. They're not news. They're not a news any more than Fox News is. When I tune in to watch Tucker Carlson, it's because I like Tucker Carlson's takes on things. I know Tucker Carlson is biased. He is a conservative Christian. But he has some libertarian ideas. He also has other ideas that I like listening to. There's other people. Greg Gutfeld cracks me up. 
I used to love listening to John Stewart. John Stewart is pretty far left. And I used to love The Daily Show. Okay, I didn't tune in to The Daily Show to get unbiased news. I tuned into The Daily Show to get news entertainment. And that's what John Stewart does. That's why Greg Gutfeld's got the biggest show in late night cable TV. Because he's out there. And to be honest, he's more reasonable than the people on the left. So I don't understand why a guy like Brian Stelter can't put two and two together. Like, maybe people don't trust legacy media anymore because we're in the habit of lying about everything. And then if there's some questioning of the narrative, we just call it misinformation. Because that's really all Rogan did. Rogan has never offered anybody medical advice. He just platformed people that questioned the efficacy of the vaccines and mandates and lockdowns. The elites, they don't want that. And when I say elites, I mean the people funding CNN. And so I don't understand whether it's an act that, no, first off, nobody wants to listen, look at Brian Stelter's fat little troll face. I mean, come on, Don Lamont, at least I see that. That's a handsome man. Anderson Cooper, that's a handsome man. But Brian Stelter, I don't get it. He's a fat little, he's a fat little roly poly donut eater who's nothing co that comes out of his mouth is even in the remote vicinity of truth or an original take on anything. If I asked him what he thought of the original Blade Runner, he'd probably start reciting some article he read on Blade Runner and then call it misinformation. Like anything. If, if we were, if we went back to 2002 and Stelter was sitting there and I go, yeah, man, I don't think they got weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Like, well, why don't you think that? Cause that's misinformation. Well, I just use deductive reasoning skills and, uh, we gave him weapons during the 1980s and he used them on the Kurds. So one of two things is going to end up happening. You're going to go in there and find out that he used all the weapons of mass destruction or that they're marked made in the USA. And we can't have that. So then you'll turn around and lie about uh, weapons of mass destruction not being there. So, I mean, as far as being baffled by why nobody wants to listen to you, Tim Pool gets more viewers than fat little troll man Brian Stelter gets. And so... I don't under, I don't even understand why CNN thought they were going to take a poke at Rogan and get him canceled. Like you realize he has 11 million people tune in per episode of his podcast. Did you really think you were going to take out of context him saying a magic word cuz he's the wrong skin color and everybody was just going to go Oh, we're done with Rogan. I have been watching since 2011. I know that he said that. I At the time, I was like, eh, maybe you don't want to say that, dude. This, it's not a nice word. I know the way you're using it is without malice, but this might not be the smartest course of action. So, you know, it's, It is what it is, but Rogan, he made the blueprint for battling the woke mob and uh, they took their shot. They lost. They don't know what to do now. And legacy media like CNN, unless they take drastic action, is going to do nothing but implode. Uh, anyways, like and subscribe or don't and I'm out.